I'm Nick Zeppos, Chancellor of Vanderbilt University. Welcome to the Zeppos Report, a podcast where I talk with the people shaping and helping us understand our world. Who better than to be my guests today? Graduating seniors Jamie Cox and Ryan Connor, the outgoing president and vice president of Vanderbilt Student Government. Jamie and Ryan have been essential members of our Vanderbilt community over the past four years, serving in multiple leadership roles on campus while excelling in their academic ventures. Jamie and Ryan, welcome to the Zeppos Report. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's a, it's a privilege, and you join uh, many distinguished guests, and I'll ask you to sign the little poster here, the banner at the end, and I think everyone will be proud to have their name up there with you, too. <laughs> so um, just do you remember the first time you walked on the campus? Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> no, Jamie, you go first. Yeah. Tell me. What was that when you first stepped foot on the campus? Um, wow, yeah, actually. So my first time coming to Vanderbilt was as a Mosaic student when I was still in high school. I came um, in February. It was cold I, with my little sleeping bag and my duffel bag, and I was very nervous um, because I had never, like, really spent – time on a college campus before and I was just greeted by all of these people excited to have high school students and we kind of marched in a little group around the campus because we were afraid to get lost coming from commons to main campus <laughs> um, so it was a very nerve-wracking week but Vanderbilt was beautiful and I fell in love with it then wow yeah, so my first time was actually when I was a junior in high school. I was actually at a music competition at Belmont, um, and we had about three hours of downtime. So I decided, you know, to see see the campus. I had heard about one person from my high school going there a few years ago. Stepped onto Wyatt Lawn, uh, just was awestruck. Uh, pulled up the Wikipedia article for Vanderbilt, started reading through it. Uh, <laughs> And I texted my dad, I was like, I think I'm going to apply early decision to Vanderbilt. And he's like, I thought you were at Belmont. What's going on? Like, <laughs> Ryan, call me. Um, but I knew just by walking on and just seeing the people and like Jamie said, they're smiling and helping you around. And I knew I was going to apply early decision. Did that make a big impact on you in terms of becoming a leader, but also kind of saying, I'm going to try to preserve and develop those qualities that drew me particularly the sense of embracing and welcoming and college admissions can be so stressful yeah. if you is that made an impact on how you've led and you've kind of interacted with students over the years I would definitely say yes for me. I remember my Mosaic hosts were so friendly and so loving. I, there was a part of Mosaic where you actually had a formal tour on campus, and I was kind of in the back of the tour lagging around, and there was a student behind me who wasn't the tour guide but just wanted to walk around, um, and he became my mentor all four years. <laughs> I called him every other week in the summer trying to figure out how to use yes and what classes to take, <laughs> um, and he never cared. He would sit on the phone with me for hours and talk me through it, and he also majored in econ, which is probably why I went through the I want to be an econ major phase um, but yeah just having that kind mentorship really inspired me to want to give back to other students while I've been here in four years and do the same like he and a lot of the other people that I met that first week did for me yeah I think um, in my case because it was so organic um, I really was able to kind of come in with an open mind. I didn't, you know, go through a bunch of college tours. I never took a college tour. Um, that Wyatt Lawn step was as much research as I did then the Wikipedia article. Um, and I think just, you know, it was a sense of feeling on campus that was really stemming from the people. And so when I think about how that impacted, you know, my four years, it really just made me want to be incredibly people oriented while I've been here and very relationship driven. And I think that has one introduced me to so many amazing people on the campus, but also I think impacted, you know, how I am as a leader. Yeah. Well, you all have some very, very bright futures ahead of you. Do you think that that's something you'll take forward? I know you're going into consulting at McKinsey and you're a Schwartzman scholar, so you're moving to China. Do you think those are skills and values that will be important in the next phase and thereafter? Yeah, I definitely think, um, I think, 
just getting to know people and really investing in, you know, people as, as themselves um, is going to be something that, you know, I, one, I just really love to do. It's just incredibly enlightening. You get to learn so much from people when you do that. And so I think uh, seeing how that's impacted me four years at Vanderbilt, I think that's something that I'm going to try and utilize for the rest of my life. And I don't, I don't see it changing. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. I think one thing that Vanderbilt definitely gives you, especially in environments like that, is just being a driven person and being outgoing and being a go-getter. And I know being a Schwartzman scholar, I'm going to be around a bunch of passionate, outgoing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> driven people for an entire year. Um, and so definitely just continuing to have that drive. It's something I know in all four years, whether it was in classes or just being involved in student organizations or talking to people on campus. I was always surrounded by people that push me. Um, and so I want to continue to be like that for other people, even going into graduate school. And I'm sure, again, in my program that I will find those people to do the same for me. So keeping that up. Yeah. When did, um, you know, I, I think the, the transformation of a kind of a senior in high school, coming on college campus, coming as a freshman, and now, you know, on Friday, walking across the stage as very distinguished graduates of the university with very bright futures, when did you actually start to crystallize kind of goals and aspirations for yourself? And, connections. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and um, you know, it's, it's kind of no one comes in. Now, I mean, kids do come in and say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer. But, you know, most people just come in and it's like, I just don't want to get lost. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be lonely. <laughs> I mean, just kind of these basic goals. Um, but yet, you know, you're leaving with these really exciting steps forward. When did goals start to crystallize around you? Like, you know, I want to be doing X or I want to learn language Y. I want to live in city Z. I want to have complex problems to solve a, B, and C for different industries. Where did that come from? So it's yeah. kind of <laughs> ironic that you asked that question. Ryan and I met in a freshman seminar called Making Connections, um, which was really about <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doing That's what you said. Class. Yeah, it was we should amazing. make it a required class. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, that was go, go teach it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the best class I've taken yeah. at Vanderbilt well, by far because I think it – it was a class where the assignments were to do exactly what you just said, to write down what you want to get out of your four years, what you want to major in, play in your classes, think about what clubs you want to be in. Um, and Ryan was my peer review essay buddy. Yeah, wow. <laughs> um, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yes. So. so we've known each other since since that class, but like Jamie said, one of the assignments was literally to go on to yes and like create these. This is what I want to major in. These are my actual requirements. This is every class I want to take at Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. um, so we really didn't have a choice. <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were really stuck with, you know, planning out four years. But, you know, it definitely has varied from that yeah. plan. But I think, you know, having that a class where it forced you to be forward thinking and, you know, got to meet Jamie. So net positive overall. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great story. Um, there's an old joke that, you know, the politics on a university campus are really vicious and tough because there's so little at stake. <laughs> and, I, you know, it's an old yeah. joke, and I, I don't really believe it. I think, you know, what's at, at stake is really the future of our city, state, country, mm -hmm. and the world as I look at you and I think of the other graduates going out. But um, you have had to, you know, wear this hat as a student leader, and be a student and a leader and listen and learn and be patient. And, I mean, you kind of model civil discourse for us. How, how did you come to appreciate that being central to your engagement out of the classroom, in the classroom, and then in the myriad ways that you're approached by, you know, really, really important issues of equi equity on the campus, inclusion on the campus, um, parking, mm -hmm. dining. How, you know, how did you say, I'm going to sit and learn and listen and try to engage with people? Yeah, I think on my end, um, 
really, I think the, the biggest benefit and the biggest intersection between the two has been truly how the liberal arts education really t- teaches you how to tackle things holistically. And I think that's helped a lot in the intersection of being a student leader because we'll be presented with this issue and in the classroom it's taught us to think about things in so many different ways and there are so many different ways that an issue can impact certain groups of people over a different group of people. So I really think that intersection between the interdisciplinary liberal arts education really helped in that regard. Yeah, and I would agree with that. I think, it, and then applying those principles and how you interact with other students, because as student leaders on this campus, you face so many different pressures from different angles and different people with different backgrounds and belief that all feel that your action should be a certain way, um, but you can't think about it for one person. You have to think about it for the whole entire campus, a campus that doesn't agree, a campus that is full of different people. Um, and so Ryan and I definitely in the past year faced a lot of moments where we had to think really hard and put our own beliefs aside for what we yeah. felt was the good of the campus and what would benefit students. And I think mm-hmm. that even though in four years, Ryan and I have had very different journeys and backgrounds where sometimes even we were at odds about issues. And I think learning how to overcome that in a small scale um, and think about kind of as Ryan talked about what, how different pieces come together together for a common purpose is how we kind of approach some of those situations. Yeah, I was, I was really kind of struck when Vice President Biden said, you know, you know, publicly and privately, he was saying, you know, I like Mitch McConnell. I, I like John McCain. Mm-hmm. These are these are people I really really like. Now I can disagree with them, mm-hmm. but not vilify them, right. and and have the conversation the next day about something. Mm-hmm. And um, I was I mean, struck by uh, Justice Sotomayor saying, "Yeah, I really disagree with Justice Thomas on a lot of things, but you know what? I really like him as a person, mm-hmm. and how one negotiates." those relationships to say we may disagree but i go to school with you yeah Mm -hmm. or i'm in the senate with you Mm -hmm. do you think you'll try to take that to the broader world and say well i disagree with this person but i'm not going to burn a bridge Mm -hmm. i mean i can stand on principle but yet i'm not going to have relationships that are just destroyed in trying to make a difference. Yeah, I think that's the one of the beautiful things about BSG that I've loved in the past four years, because being when I was a sophomore, I was a senator, and we did have those moments in Senate when we debated small issues from what how we should write a letter to campus dining to larger issues about conflicts and things going on on a national scale that a lot of senators just disagreed with, and we yeah. had to have really passionate debates. But the thing about it is we all had to go to the VSG general body gathering meeting or we all had to go back to Senate the next day. So it kind of taught you how to have those conversations, even though they're difficult, and continue to balance the relationship. Yeah, I was, I was really kind of struck at some of the major issues that you had to debate and that were openly discussed that were, you know, tough, raw issues that mm-hmm. were on the front pages of all the newspapers and Mm -hmm. okay well how do we have that debate Mm -hmm. realizing that we're back at it tomorrow Mm -hmm. and you found VSG was able to do that you too Ryan yeah I think um you know especially reflecting on the Biden talk I remember the one quote that really stuck with me was when he was talking about his colleagues in the Senate when he said you can question someone's judgment but never question their motives Uh, and I think like Jamie was kind of talking about earlier I think VSG has been uh a great learning experience in that aspect because it's really taught, you know, we're sitting in the room and like Jamie said, we we would disagree every once in a while on how to approach an issue, but, Mm -hmm. you know, realizing that everyone in that room wants to do what's best for campus and that's what's driving them uh, has really been able to allow us to work through those disagreements in a way that's been constructive uh, and, you know, allows us to still be friends at the end of the day. (laughs) So, You know, there there are many things, you know, obviously that you know, I would say we're proud of, and I think the increased diversity, the um, funding um, and the generous gifts for, I think, almost $400 million for Opportunity Vanderbilt now. Um, But I think we've all learned very much that, um, you know, 
having a robust admissions process that diversifies the class, that creates opportunity Vanderbilt, is only the beginning of a journey for a university and a student. And so you've worked so much on what is the kind of learning, social, placement environment on the campus. And we have a lot of work to do there. What do you think are the things that you've worked on and then kind of as Lanier and Tariq think about right now, this is not a one-year project. Mm -hmm. What have you worked on and that we should keep working on generally and even specifically? And we've talked about things over the last year in our wonderful meetings. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the most important things that Ryan and I worked on this year was economic inclusivity. And that broadly looked like a lot of things for us. That was first starting the economic inclusivity committee um, in VSG, which Ryan led, um, and then working even on campus with ACFI, or in the activities fees, to see how those are allocated to different student organizations and how those disparities can impact students' experiences depending on whether the organizations are large or small or what purposes they serve. And this even went into transportation initiatives like working with Lyft and Uber to try to make sure getting around Nashville was affordable and fair for students. So I think that's one thing we were really passionate about this year, and we kind of put that in mind in every aspect of things that we tried to do or bring to campus. Yeah, and I think what was great about working on that issue is um, the dialogue that I think the campus is starting to have as it relates to economic inclusivity, but I also just think it it's amazing how multifaceted the issue is. So I think when looking at these you know long projects uh, that the university will tackle, it's something that I think affects a lot of different layers, whether it be in the classroom, the social experience, interacting with the city of Nashville. I really think there are a lot of layers that will slowly start to start to be exposed as the dialogue increases on campus, but echoing Jamie, I really think economic inclusivity is, is one of the, the biggest issues that we tried to start tackling this year and hopefully VSG tackles in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, I would, I would commend you for, you know, kind of tackling that and your persistence, your patience, and you know, also just the sophistication and nuance you bring to, okay, where are the levers of power? How does the funding work? Because at the end of the day, you're working with, you know, fairly well-established systems that maybe haven't changed as much as you have all changed as students. And that the values that you want to bring and the other students want to bring. And so I think you know, there are really tough issues around ACFI and support for student organizations. And, um, you know, one can shy away from those and say, well, it works and things like that. Or one can say, well, Vanderbilt's changed. The students have changed. We aspire to do more and be different. Is this changing? And the minute you ask if that's changing, particularly when it involves money, I mean, it's it it really requires a lot of uh you know i think um courage and um you know persistence um so let me ask you about um do you have mentees yourself as you <laughs> now are leaving and does it stun you that in four years i think you're amazing <laughs> and i think you're amazing when you came and i've kind of I would say known you for, you know, pretty much almost your whole career. Do you have mentees and do you feel like, wow, I've kind of moved along this developmental trajectory where I could have something to give back to somebody? Yeah, I definitely do. I think for me and because I've had so many different positions in my four years where I've been in leadership roles and just active on campus. I was the president of the Black Student Association. I was a VU Scepter. I was an RA. And in each of these roles, I was able to interact with so many different students and in some ways touch so many different students in ways that I didn't even know at the time I was doing. Then when I became student body president, I had students that were emailing me and texting me and telling me how much they looked up to me and how much they wanted to do this program that I did or this internship that I had. And I had one of the girls that joined my sorority 
this year also went on the same Maymester um, program that I did, went on the same Oaks program that I did, is now <laughs> wanting to join BSG. Um, and it's so interesting to look back and see how people pay attention to the things that you do, even when you're not putting conscious effort into doing them. Um, and so that really kind of inspires me. Their, their passion for wanting to pay attention to what I do inspires me to want to do more and be a better mentor for them. Um, because I know I had those people looking back that I looked up to and was watching what they were doing and was trying to do the same thing. So now that I'm that person for somebody else, it kind of adds a different pressure to yeah. you. Yeah, I think um, one of the best parts about Vanderbilt for me is I was a commons RA for for two years uh, and just seeing especially my residents you know coming in um, and I'm sure I look the same way but you know wide-eyed and you know trying to hectically move in and then seeing them progress throughout their four years has been amazing um, and I think when I look back like Jamie was saying the the mentors that helped shape me and my leadership and my experience at Vanderbilt it's been a blessing and something I never thought that I would be in the position to really do that for someone else. Uh, and seeing some of my residents who have gone on to be HRs of Kasam, um, funny, funnily enough, Tariq went to my high school and uh, he was also in the dorm that I was uh, an RA in my sophomore year. He was he was a first year student in East House. So uh, watching his progression through VSG has just been amazing. Um, since I've known him since he was ten, <laughs> um, so it's it's really been one of the, one of the highlights of my Vanderbilt experience is watching people grow uh, and and being a part of that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, for those of us who kind of really chose to and devoted themselves to being in education and on a college campus. That's why we do what we do. I mean, we love kind of the beauty of the campus and the freedom of thought, the freedom of expression that comes with it, but it really is the ability to kind of see somebody go on to do amazing things because you are part of the journey with them. And um, I think it's, uh, you know, as much as, I mean, it's a real privilege to be the chancellor, but I think seeing my graduates like you and uh, going back 31 years go out and you know, lead really, really amazing, diverse, productive lives and contribute to society is you're getting a taste of that and the responsibility, you know, you, you, you certainly um, embrace that. Um, you know, I get asked a lot and I ask at our chancellor's lectures when we have distinguished speakers, you know, what does leadership mean to you? What is your leadership style? And you know, I'm kind of like, well, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's not like I read a bunch of books about it, and then I developed a thesis. It's, um, and you've seen Secretary Gates, you've seen Vice President Biden, you've seen, um, you know, Acting Attorney General uh, Sally Yates. You know, you've seen Carly Fiorina. Do you start to think? They talk about leadership. This is what resonates with me as I think of being a leader. Do you feel like if someone, as you're mentoring kids, say, hey, you know, Jamie, what's your leadership style? What's your leadership philosophy? And it's like, I just turned 21. I mean, you know, yeah. because, you know I, I, I ask the Secretary of Defense. Yeah. I mean, you know, ask someone who ran for president. Yeah. Ask the vice president. But do, do you feel like you're starting to be able to answer that question at a very – young part of your career I think so and I think so for a lot of a lot of different reasons in that my view of leadership I think has changed ev all four years every year um, because I've been placed in a lot of different situations where I had to lead differently sometimes leading from being student body president and sometimes leading from just being a member of a general body or a member of the Senate and both of those situations are leadership, which is something that I've learned here at Vanderbilt. Um, and so just being able to realize that and think of that is sort of helping me define what leadership means to me, but I've also learned that leadership is something different to everyone else. Um, and so you have to definitely develop your own 
personal leadership style because in situations that you go into, if you do want to make change and you do want to influence the spaces that you go into, it requires you to lead other people differently um, and adjust your style to those rooms and those situations. So yeah, I think that's what I've learned and gotten out of being in VSG and everything else that I've done um, in these four years. And it's sort of wild for me to realize that and think of that because if you asked me that question as a freshman, I wouldn't know. Yeah. how to answer it or yeah. even talk about it. Yeah. Um, being that even as Vanderbilt students, we come from being involved in high school and in leadership roles right. in high school, but that's very different than being 22, I guess. Yeah, yeah. picking a homecoming theme is a little different. A little than different than yeah. being, It all starts yeah. with something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, um, especially reflecting on these past four years, I, I would say, and I think Jamie was sort of hinting at this, but how situational leadership is mm -hmm. and how circumstantial it is. And I think that's something that I'll definitely take forward is just realizing and having the awareness to what is my role in this situation? Um, and how can I be a leader, even if that's not in title, even if, you know, I, I would say like next year, I'm planning on going into to my job and just being a sponge uh, and just, you know, trying to soak in all that information that I can in hopes of being a better leader in the future. Um, and I think realizing what role you play uh, has, has been a big lesson that I've taken from Vanderbilt, especially freshman year when, uh, looking back on it, I was that sponge and I was just getting coffee with people and uh, how that helped me four years later in, in this role. So I think it's incredibly situational and I, I, I think that's my, if I had to say a thesis at this point, that's probably what I'll take forward. Yeah. I know history is written over long periods of time, but Reflect on the Vanderbilt that you came into in 2014 and the one you're leaving for short years. Are they different schools? Are they the same? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i in this weird position where I, I see differences that are fairly significant, but yet then I walk across the campus and it's like the tree's still there. Okay, that building still needs to be fixed. I still don't know my way around Stevenson. What what is, did did Vanderbilt change or did you change or is it a combination of both? I definitely would say it's a combination of both for me. I know when I came in in 2014, my view of Vanderbilt was so much more narrow just because coming from St. Louis and being just aware of things that were going on nationally in the country, there was a lot of tension on campus and it felt like there was a lot of confusion about what a college campus's role was in processing these things and processing yeah. the views for students. Um, and so I felt like I was very much in the middle of that. And so I watched Vanderbilt, I felt like, go through that change and figure out how to tackle those issues in four years. And that's manifested in a lot of different things. The organization Hidden Doors being formed on campus and the removal of the name Confederate from Memorial Hall and the addition of the vice chancellor and vice provost for equity and inclusion and inclusive right. excellence, all of these different new things that we've added and changes that we've made to the campus that our class has gotten to watch. Um, all in my view for the betterment of the students and for how students are experiencing different things. Um, and just being a person of color on this campus, I felt like Vanderbilt has progressed in a lot of ways exponentially in areas of diversity and inclusion, which is something that was very important to me when I came to campus because that was such an important part of my college experience. Um, and so in that way, I think the campus experience has changed a lot for students um, that were involved in organizations like I was in the the Black Student Association are in mm -hmm. hidden doors and that a lot of the issues that we were trying to tackle four years ago aren't issues anymore. And of course there are a lot, there's a lot more to do and there's Absolutely. a lot left to work on. But I think the fact that we've just overcome so much um, in the time that I've been at Vanderbilt and I was able to be a part of that is something that's really powerful. Yeah, yeah I would say it, it's interesting. I would definitely agree that it's a combination of both and I think um, not only just change, but growth. Uh, I think, you know, obviously we've both grown and matured over four years, but I think the university has, has really grown as well. Um, and in the sense that I think when we came onto this campus, um, you know, there was a lot of national issues going on. There was, you know, things happening on Vanderbilt's campus that I feel by their very nature was sort of reactionary. Like it was, it, you had to just sort of take things as they came and try to develop solutions. But in looking at how, you know, the university has operated this year and sort of what we're planning on doing with Future View, I think uh, it's shifted to a very forward thinking um, and not necessarily reactionary, but more 
you know, let's let's look towards the future. How can we do better on, before things get worse? And yeah. I think that's been a, a, an amazing shift. Yeah. I think it's interesting too, and I think a lot of students, faculty, and staff, particularly, would be like, right, how's my voice heard, and does anyone really care what I think? And you know, and kind of when I look at you know the last four years you've been here, and you know, even before that, just the um, impact that the students coming and their values and their aspirations for the school make on me and the desire for a better, great Vanderbilt, which always has to be our goal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, often the mismatch between, well, we want to be great, but, well, do we really need to take that on? It's like, yeah. I mean, you have to. And so I I think that, you know, I would kind of, you know, we, we would meet regularly and talk about a lot of things. I hope you leave with a sense of um, there's a school that you're part of that, um, yeah, everyone tries to work together to make it better and to really change it where, you know, and it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be really even close to that. But, you know, we've got to kind of say, okay, we, we listen and we talk and we learn and then we move forward. So I, I hope you feel as student leaders that whether it's working with me, the provost, vice chancellor Copstein, Dean Bandis, that a lot of that change is because, number one, you chose to come to Vanderbilt. And then you chose and you love the school, but you also said it can be better. It can change. And I think those two things very much go together you know, for me and many others that, you know, I wanted you to come to Vanderbilt. I wanted you to tell me what could make Vanderbilt better. And, you know, I, I think that um, you've done a really remarkable job in the changes and contributed to that. Um, and I take, you know, great pleasure in the fact that I got to work with you to let me focus a little bit on Nashville and change. Mm -hmm. Did when you came to visit, did you have any sense of the place called Nashville or the place Vanderbilt in the city of Nashville and what Nashville was like? Yeah, so when I came here, I, I come from a fairly small town in Illinois, so uh, Nashville's by far the biggest city that I've spent extensive time in. Um, and I just had no idea as a first year student the, the different opportunities I think that Nashville provides Vanderbilt students and in, in the four years that I've been here just being able to soak in the city of Nashville um, whether it be different restaurants concerts it, seeing it change has been amazing sometimes a little overwhelming I, I think uh, seeing how quickly Erickson Hotel went up it was <laughs> it was a little bit of a, a culture yeah. shock um, yeah. but just the city of Nashville has just been amazing and watching it grow in tandem with the university and how the two have interacted has just been definitely definitely one of the most positive parts about the Vanderbilt experience on my end. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think from the opposite side though, being from St. Louis, Missouri, a big yeah. city, my view of Nashville was it's a small country place. <laughs> yeah. There's like nothing but yeah. fast food and cowboy boots. Um, yeah was really my perception and obviously that was wrong um, yeah. so yeah coming to visit and seeing just how large and how vibrant the city was and how much of a college town it was was a shock to me because I didn't know I knew there were neighboring universities around Vanderbilt but I just didn't know how that impacted the city and how that impacted the culture of the city because I think the young people being here have definitely sent Nashville on a trajectory where it's growing at an amazingly fast rate there's a new building up it seems like every other day looking around campus and that's only going to increase from here. Um, and so, yeah, being a part of that slice for four years has been really interesting to watch. And I think that I'm scared to come back for our reunion because it's not going to be the same yeah. place that it was when I came to it. Yeah, I think um, when graduates come back for reunion or just visiting the city, um, the, the, you know, the parts of the campus will look familiar. You know, particularly, you know, you walk around Peabody and you walk around the old campus. Some of the things, you know, when they see, I lived in Kassam, that's a lot nicer, or now Ebron St. College, well, that's a lot nicer, and 
boy, this Wondery is really cool. And uh, so the thing, the things uh, change. I think the for us, Nashville is a really extraordinary draw for bringing college students, recruiting staff, faculty, because all we are is a place of diverse talent and trying to build a community that's beloved around that. And people are drawn to creative spaces, creative cities. I think the challenge for Vanderbilt now is to never think our that our investment in Nashville is forever mm -hmm. and that people can't be left behind mm -hmm. in a transformation of a city. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think for, for us on future VU that, you know, we've talked about, it's like, okay, you know, um, and these are kind of more general concepts apart from the transit initiative, but it's like, okay, what is the, impact of Uber and Lyft. What is the impact of Lyft? How do students afford that and interact with it? How do we make it more accessible, more affordable? And then what about um, the students who don't live on the campus and are driving in and the rents are really expensive? And what about, you know, workers who can't afford to live close to campus anymore and have to drive in and clock in? And so how do I think, you know, I'm so proud of the academic progress, but you know, just working to make this a better city for everybody, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think is really important because you never want to be, well, we're a great, really great university. It's like, oh, there are people who live around us? I think that's really corrosive to the mission. And actually, the you know, it's it's losing your moral compass. Mm -hmm. And so I think for for what you've done on the campus and talked about Nashville also, always being alert to, well, what is the healthcare like in Nashville? Who is really getting these jobs? Who is really benefiting from, you know, all this construction? I think those are things that really still are on my mind and on your mind because we have to coexist in an, we just can't have opportunity Vanderbilt. We've got to have, yeah. you know, opportunity Nashville and yeah. opportunity in America. So I think it'll be very interesting to see how the city continues to to develop and making sure that you know we don't become a tale of two cities with those who did not have an opportunity hmm. and those who did and hopefully when when you come back you'll say yeah you know I, I recognize the campus it's a better place and I like the way that Nashville is is developing mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's been a real honor to be with you, and uh, I will um, have to say that it's you know, my privilege to have worked with you in a time of, I think, great excitement and change um, and challenge at Vanderbilt. And you've been um, incredible contributors to, to this. So um, thank you, Jamie, and thank you for Ryan for joining me today as we reflect on your time at Vanderbilt, your many accomplishments. And um, I look forward to having, I guess, a last brief moment at commencement, but <laughs> as we say, Vanderbilt for life. And, you know, I expect you to kind of stay in touch with all of us and we'll, we'll celebrate your many accomplishments going forward and um, always take great pride that you're graduates of our great university. So you can download this and other episodes of the Zeppos Report at vu.edu slash Zeppos dash report. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank it's been you. Great.